In this video, I'll show you how I went about making a sugar astronaut using existing resources and a collection of free tools. You can find the full list of required software in the description. While you probably don't want to make your own sugar atronach, you can follow along and use these same principles for your own project, like a fork crown or a beehive bear. First, I need to extract the meshes and textures that I'm going to use from their BSA files using BSA opt. Make sure you keep show recursive checked and hit the clear selection button after opening a file, or you'll end up exporting the entire contents of the archive. Most of the files I need are in the standard meshes and texture file but I'll also pull some out of the hearth file DLC so that I have a few more pastries to work with. Use the search box to find your files. If you're having trouble finding something, open the vanilla asset in the creation kit to find the name of the mesh. I want my sugar atronach to use the skeleton and animations of an existing creature instead of attempting to start from scratch. I'm exporting both the frost atronach and storm atronach because I'm still not sure which one I want to use. Next, we need to prepare the mesh files for Blender. Since the NIF Tools plugin has not been updated to accommodate Skyrim files properly, we need to change a few things in each NIF file so that NIF Tools can process them properly. After looking at both of the Atronachs and NIF Scope, I decided that I preferred the Frost Atronach and would not be preparing the Storm Atronach for Blender. First, find the header in your Block Details window. If you don't see it, go to the View menu and select Reset Block Details. Expand the header and you should see two entries named User Version. These need to be changed to 11 and 34. Next in the block list, expand the first block and find your tri-shape blocks. Each tri-shape block should have a lighting shader property block. Right click on each lighting shader block and select block delete branch. You can also just select the block and use the shortcut control delete. There are other block types unique to Skyrim that will need to be deleted before the file can be imported. My pastry files have BSINB marker blocks, which I will need to remove. Save each of your meshes to new files. I collected all of mine into a project folder and put the original meshes in a separate folder from the Blender Ready meshes with a third folder for my textures. Now we can open Blender. I'm using version 2.49, which is the latest version compatible with NIF tools. Blender opens with a new project file containing a box and a light source. Hit A to select all of these objects and delete to remove them. First, I import my Frost Atronach. Make sure your import settings are exactly like this when you are importing a Skyrim mesh. After importing one object, make sure you deselect it before importing another. Now we can add textures to the objects to help approximate how they will appear in the game as we work. I won't bother texturing the Frost Atronach. Start by right-clicking on the edge of your view screen and splitting it in half. Change one side from 3D View to UV Image Editor. Import all of your texture files. Select your first object and switch to Textured View. In your Panels window, make sure you have selected Shading and Materials to bring up the Materials buttons. Under Links and Pipeline, select Add New. Rename your material appropriately, and then switch to the Texture button. Click Add New again, and change the texture type to Image. Load the image appropriate for this object on the right. Go back to the Materials button, and under the Map Input tab, select UV. Switch from Object Mode to Edit Mode, and hit the A key to make sure all of your vertexes are selected. Then go to the Image window, and select the appropriate texture again. Return to object mode and repeat these steps for each object. My tart object has multiple possible textures, and I want all of them to be represented in my Atronach. I used the duplicate shortcut, Shift D, to make enough copies of the tart before applying the textures. Now that all of my pastries are textured, I can start assembling my Atronach. I switch the UV image window back to a 3D view window, and set it to a top view by hitting 7 on the numpad. It will be easier to see how my pastries are lining up with the Atronach shape if I switch the views to wireframe. I want to make sure that the overall shape of my Atronach is relatively similar to that of the original, since it will be using the same animation set. were making it difficult for me to see what I was doing in the torso, 
so I made a copy of the Frost Atronach and hid one. Thankfully, the Atronach arms are not physically connected to the body, so I can select one vertex per segment and press Ctrl and plus until the entire arm is selected and then delete them. Now that my arc is finished, I want to merge all of its parts into a single object so that it will be easier to rig to the skeleton. Next, I will delete all of the other objects and save to a new file. With nothing selected, I'll import another Frost Atronach. Delete the skeleton, and then hit Ctrl P to clear the parent from the mesh. Now I'll switch to the editing panel and take a look at the vertex groups. This first vertex group, SBP3 head, does not match the others. You will usually have one vertex group that should not match, and it should be deleted. Make sure every vertex is selected on both objects. Then select them together, starting with the vanilla mesh. Go to the Objects menu, then Scripts, and select Bone Weight Copy. It might take a while. When it's finished, you can delete the vanilla mesh again. Now I'm going to look over and adjust all of the vertex groups that the script created. You want to make sure that each vertex is only in one group and none are left out. For my Atronach, I want to make sure that each complete pastry is only animated by one bone, because pastries don't flex well. In order to use all of the original textures, I need a separate object for each material. In edit mode, I can select sections by material and then separate them. Next, my Atronach needs a skeleton. This time, I want to have my Atronach selected while importing the Frost Atronach. When attaching a skeleton to a new mesh, change the import settings so that they look like this. Atronach is ready to be exported to a new NIF file. It will need some final touches in NIF scope before it can go into the creation kit. First I'll go back into the header and reset those user version numbers to their original values. Next I'll copy the lighting shader property from each of the original NIFs into the appropriate tri-shape block on my new file.
Next, on each tri-shape branch, you'll need to find the dismember skin distance branch. Expand the partitions list and make sure the flags are set appropriately. Then you'll need to replace the dismember body part type with the appropriate value. Typing in just the number should be enough to bring up the appropriate label. This may take some trial and error. For my Atronach, I had to set all of them to 30, or head. On my first test, all parts that I had set to 32 body were invisible on my Atronach. Make sure the appropriate flags are selected on each lighting shader property. You'll probably need to check SLSF1 skinned on each of your objects. In your Skyrim install directory, open data meshes and create a folder for your mod's mesh files and copy your new mesh into it. Now we can start the creation kit. Select the data files that your mod will require. Since the Sugar Atronach is using textures from the Hearthfire DLC, I've selected that master file. It will automatically load any masters that this is dependent on. If your mod just needs the base game, then select Skyrim. Warning windows like this one will pop up while the creation kit is loading. Just hit yes to all on each of them. Instead of going through the hassle of making a new race, I'm going to create an outfit that is worn by a Frost Atronach, which gives it the Sugar Atronach appearance. By searching in the Armor Add-on section, I found the Naked Armor piece for each Atronach. I'll open this and rename it to make a copy for my mod. I just need to replace the mesh with my own. Now I need to pick a naming convention for this mod. It's a good practice to prefix your IDs so that you're less likely to conflict with names from other mods. I always use a four-letter prefix starting with HH. In this case, I'll use HHSA for all of my form IDs. My armor object needs an armor form as well. I'll use the Frost Atronach form again. Now I need an outfit containing just my sugar armor. Oh, sugar armor. Finally, I can make my actors. I'm doing a lot of copying existing forms instead of starting from scratch. I like doing this because I'm less likely to forget some little detail that breaks everything for no good reason. All I have to do now is add my Atronach outfit, and it should be ready to test.